Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee as we uh, take a look at uh, what we're seeing with the, the beginning of the uh, afternoon model runs coming in. And we have enough of the GFS, and we may have a little bit more of the Canadian by the time I get to it. So hopefully it'll be there beyond uh, the early part of the period. But here we have the first trough that's coming out. And we're looking at the upper airflow, the jet stream pattern, as we go into Sunday and Sunday night and Monday. And one of the things that the GFS is doing on this run is, and we talked about this on last night's video, is the um, apparent uh, weakness or lack thereof uh, with this first lead system that's coming out. And you can pick it out here. The GFS has a much more defined shortwave on today's run which will explain what it does on the surface. And in the meantime, by the way, this is the upper vortex that's coming down uh, with cold air. And, in the, and that's going to be uh, moving in right behind this system. So as we move along, you can see it's, it's, a, it's a defined little short wave there that goes into the Great Lakes. And if this happens, this is going to mean that we'll probably have some kind of a primary low that's going to want to go up uh, to... Uh, North Northeast Ohio or Western New York with an attempt of a secondary developing just offshore. There will be some cold air that will dam down uh, into the Northeast and down into parts of New Jersey and Pennsylvania and maybe even into parts of uh, Maryland. But it will ultimately change over to rain. It's going to be a question of how much you would get on the front end. And that's if this is correct, because, you know, this is these model flip-flops back and forth, or I wouldn't call them flip-flops so much, but just whether things are amplified or not amplified is very, very frustrating. And when we look at the NAM model, for example, and I'm going to switch just to give you a comparison in the same time frame, you know, here's where the GFS is uh, for Sunday evening. And, you know, when we look at the NAM, uh, it's kind of the same. So it's really the period after this, the NAM does not go out far enough. Actually, the NAM has a weaker, this is a weaker looking kink here. So, you know, perhaps the short wave is going to be weaker. If it is weaker, then we we're talking about colder air being more important here. And you'll probably take a primary into Ohio someplace and, and maybe reform it a little further south. So that could cause perhaps set us up for a little bit more in the way of, of uh, snow. So let's show you what the surface is doing. And I'm going to tell you, regardless of how this plays out, and we're going to see some more changes. Nothing's written in stone here. Um, we're, we're going to see some more model changes going forward. And, uh, you know, we're going into what I believe is a very dynamic pattern. I mentioned this last night. And today's model run on the on so far, I, I don't really see anything that takes me away from that. Now, this is Sunday evening, and we've got low pressure, assuming, again, that the GFS is correct here, that we don't wind up with something uh, a little bit weaker, uh, which which would be important if that's the case. So here we have, I'll put the, the uh, fronts on for you. So we've got, you know, this, this pretty well-defined low that's sitting uh, in southwest Missouri, and there's a warm front kind of right through here, okay? So here's your cold air, your cold high is up right in there. And in the blue light blue area here this is all you know light snow that's that's reaching the ground so um by sunday evening we've got a little bit of snow going on over parts of the coast and in inland pennsylvania and then when we move into uh, monday morning now see this is the big difference from the overnight okay uh, we have a really well-defined primary low that's up into northwest northeastern indiana if we go back to the overnight run, you can see the difference. The system is 14 millibars deeper on today's run. You have a much flatter look here that's running into Southern Ohio. This look that, that was shown from last night actually kind of makes sense in the context of what we've been seeing over the last couple of weeks. This idea of a, of a deeper low, one deeper low coming out is a bit unusual. And this is what the European showed yesterday during the day before it flipped and showed what the GFS showed last night. So you can kind of see how confusing this all is because we don't know which model really is leading which. I will say, as we look at the snow maps, let's look at the snowfall maps out of something like this because I think there could still be, you know, either way, there could be a good front end um, snowfall for somebody 
uh, out of this. So let, let's let's show you what the GFS does. And um, hopefully the Canadian is in. I, I've already been told what the Canadian does, and the Canadian does more, but I want to see you know, for myself. But, you know, based on what the uh, GFS does through Monday evening, you can, uh, from interior New Jersey, you know, the, the light blue would indicate two or three inches. And, I mean, it does have that even down into parts of Long Island, um, the northern half of New Jersey. Um, this, the, this darker shading of blue, the darker shading of blue is barely a coating, okay? The, this one is from a coating to an inch. So it's this third area of blue that would be an inch or more. So... It basically runs up from 195 northward. Uh, it includes uh, Philadelphia, gets down into South Central PA, uh, and also, uh, you know, you get some trace amounts as you get into uh, South Cent uh, Central Maryland. But there's going to be uh, an ice issue, I think, uh, a possibility of, of, of some kind of ice issue, but we're not going to know that until we get closer. So let's switch out of this and let's go back uh, to uh, the surface map, and you can take a look at what this does. And there's that, you know, that lead area of snow for Sunday is weak. It's, you know, warm air trying to come eastward into the cold air and are you producing clouds and, you know, some, some snow and maybe even a little bit of ocean, of, uh, you know, some slight Long Island Sound or ocean effect going on here. Uh, but then gradually as that warm front takes hold, you can see you get a pretty decent burst of snow probably um, early sun, uh, late Sunday night, early Sunday, mo Monday morning. And then it gradually changes over to rain. Again, assuming that we have one deep low. So let me just widen out real quick and take a look and see how much of the Canadian we have so far. And by the way, <clears throat> beyond this, there's a second wave that shows up uh, and uh, for the middle of next week with the Arctic air. So let's see how much of the Canadian is, is out and hopefully, oh good, it's out far enough so we can see what the Canadian did. And I can already tell you from the look, the Canadian has that weaker look you know, it has a weaker low that goes into central Ohio, and that means cold air is more important. And this is uh, Monday morning here, and you can see on the Canadian model, you know, there's ridging down uh, from uh, from southeastern Canada, from New Brunswick, uh, down uh, into Pennsylvania. So as a result, it creates, uh, a, 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 you know, a, certainly a colder look, and then you get this area of icing as cold air dams down further south into the uh, against the mountains of Virginia and the mountains in central Maryland. And there's your primary low that, you know, starts to stretch out and then redevelop. So it, it kind of keeps it mostly snow for a, a, a good portion of the area before it, that low pulls away to the Northeast. And here you have the Arctic front. Now we're getting into Tuesday night and, and uh, the Arctic front, let me just get the right, I like to make sure my fronts are blue. So there's your Arctic front here for Tuesday night, you know, and that's gonna be pushing eastward. The question is whether there's going to be some kind of a wave that's going to develop on that particular front. And when we uh, go back, I'll take you back to the, let's look at the Canadian snowfall map uh, just as a comparison. And that's out far enough. So, um, you know, has much more robust snowfalls here. I guess I should just get a little tighter. Let me go to the northeast. We'll do there. Okay, so you can see what the Canadian does. It actually has uh, some substantial snows down into from South Central PA up across uh, much of Central and Northern New Jersey. Uh, the red, the purplish area would represent six inch plus amount. So it's showing a lot of that through much of interior New Jersey, Southeastern New York, much of Eastern Pennsylvania, much of Connecticut. You know, even Long Island uh, it gets uh, at least several inches, and then you get into those higher amounts as you go into a, uh, Nassau County in New York City. Again, if that's a flatter look like that, that's what's, you know, you're going to wind up getting, this may be more realistic than what the GFS has. I, you know, that's going to be hard to, hard to say. The, the way the overall pattern has played out over the last number of weeks, um, systems have been forecast to be strong and they wind up being relatively weak as we get closer to uh, the time frame that would seem to make the most sense to me um uh, until we start seeing actually seeing deep lows the models keep forecasting them to happen and they don't um you know i want to be really cautious so I, I think everything is still pretty much on the table from what we saw before uh, the european is going to have its own opinion and here's the last before we finish up 
This is the Arctic front on Wednesday that comes through with some rain and snow, and then that goes out. And then you can see there's more opportunities. Do not focus on the literal look of a low going to the Great Lakes because we don't know that that is going to be the case. Uh, and then there's one uh, the weekend of January 19th and 20th that comes up the coast with more cold air behind it. And then still another one starts to take hold as we get closer to Christmas. So who knows? Uh, after day we we're not even with this first thing is um, it's inside day five and we have still don't have a, a good feel for how this will play out. So uh, I will uh, post more on this on the website meteorologistjoechaffee.com for local forecasts for New York City, uh, Long Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Eastern Pennsylvania, and the Hudson Valley. Download my app. You can subscribe. The app download is free. You can subscribe to my forecast for all of a buck a month. So for uh, less than half of what it costs you for a cup of uh, a cup of uh, coffee, you could have Joe Chaffee. Ugh, somebody said that to me yesterday, and I was like, "No, that's just so bad." So anyhow, um, have a great day, and don't forget when all this. By the way, the other thing is SS Storm Chasers when all this gets underway. So you want to make sure you uh, go to their website um, and uh, ssstormchasing.com and take a look at the stuff that's up there. I have posts up there too. So uh, have a great uh, Thursday and uh, we'll uh, probably cut a video tonight when I get home around midnight.